Hi, I'm Everett Follett. I handle the sales and marketing here at Spearfish Pellet Company. We're located in Spearfish, South Dakota, along with our sawmill Spearfish Forest products. Here at Spearfish, we take all of our byproducts from our operations down at the sawmill and planer and make Heartland wood pellets, Black Hills Gold heating pellets, and Stall Pro bedding pellets. What I'd like to do today is take you through our process and show you a brief overview of how we end up with our finished product and some of the things you can do to uh, maximize the quality that we put into the product, getting it this far, and how you can protect it at home. What we'll go check out first, let's go out to our byproduct area where we receive the sawdust and the shavings up from our sawmill and our planer. We'll start there and I'll walk you through the process. We're currently in the infeed area. We store all of our byproducts here. This material is coming from the planer, its shavings. There's other material in here from our sawmill, the sawdust, and ground up chips. They're coming about 300 yards from our sawmill inside of an enclosed area dumped out on an asphalt floor. But we try to use every bit of every log that we harvest in the woods, uh, not only the board, but the sawdust, the chips from the outside, the bark is used. Nothing goes to waste with any of the product that's brought in uh, compared to the old days when it was just stockpiled and, and would eventually rot. But we, uh, as you can see, we store for a whole week's supply and then run it on out through the whole weekend and uh, mix and match as we go. So as we go through the process, we'll show you what happens to each of these different products and how we use them. As the loader brings the material in, we have two infeed bins where we can, uh, again, meter in the material. The one he's dumping into now is for our dry material. The bin on the right is for the wet material. Our computers can gauge how much of each is going into the mix. So uh, one of the big things is, is we don't want to have an opacity problem. So our dryer works best with a certain moisture. We can only dry so much each day. So we mix these together to, uh, to end up with a lower moisture content for an average. The next process is the material that we mix together out in the infeed area goes into our big triple pass dryer here. We have 60 feet of drying capacity. So it's inside where we get very consistent drying. So in the middle of the winter, we're still getting good moisture readings on the material that's getting ready to get pelletized. These are the pellet mills we use for actually forming the pellet themselves. Uh, as you can see, we're taking the dry material, we're bringing it in down through the top of the machine, it drops in, uh, it's forced through some little holes, the diameter of the pellets that you see in the bag when we're done. So we form the pellet, they come out the front of the machine, and then they go down to a cooler where we immediately get them back down to room temperature so they'll hold together better. Now we're to the next stage of the pellets. They've been produced, formed into the pellet, cooled outside the storage area. What's coming in now is the finished product. Our finished product is all ready to go, uh, compressed together. We get a variety of lengths here to work better in the stove. But this is our finished product when we're all done. The sawdust, the shavings, all mixed together. Next step for us is getting the pellets in the bags. Uh, the pellets have gone over two Rotex screens to get as many fines out as we can. Uh, our bags come in big rolls like this. The bottom seam is already made at the factory. And then we make the side seams. The bag will be cut. And then we'll also seal it across the front or the top once it's been filled up. Next step, as the film is unrolled and the bags come into the machine, 
The first step we do is something that most people don't realize. Back underneath that beam there, we're actually poking holes in the bag. Um, if we didn't do that, when we seal it up, it would be like trying to stack balloons. And the, and the packet would never stabilize. So even though it's a plastic bag, it is not waterproof. And as soon as the weather cover is off, then you have to make sure these bags are covered up. So we put the, the air breather holes in here. We're splitting the bag up and down. So then you form your bag as you slide over. The next step then is to fill the bag. Uh, our scale runs 40 pounds. We always run that just a little bit heavy. The bag is filled up. Next step down, uh, the top of the bag is being sealed uh, with a heat seal so it's formed. And then the extra plastic on the top is taken off from there. Uh, we recycle that and the bag's gone up to the stacker now. Now that the bag is formed and filled, we get it tipped over, turned so it's ready to go up to the palletizer. Also, as it goes through the first belt, we're squeezing any excess air out of it and getting it flat. So again, so it stacks very, very evenly and our packets are nice and square, stable for shipping. So, on they go. We'll go take a look at the palletizer next. Now our bags are coming down. They've been flattened. They've been turned. Each bag comes down. We like this system compared to the robotic system because we have a person that's looking at every single bag to see how our seam is, to see if we're leaking any pellets or not. This is kind of an air table system. Uh, there's actually air blowing up through it. So as they move the bags, they slide very easily. We don't have to lift them and set them down. We alternate the way the bags feed each time so they'll stack stable. Now the, ba the layer is formed tight, barely lowered onto the pallet below, and we start back over. Uh, we do put 12 layers on each pallet that we make, and then they'll go on, they'll feed out, and we'll put the weather cover on them. They keep them uh, waterproof and they can be stored outside then. Okay, next is the palletizer. Uh, we start out with a 40 by 48 pallet. That pallet will feed on to the next station where a white weather cover is put on it. Well, uh, white weather cover on the pallet, not on the whole unit. But you can see the bags underneath the stacker there. Uh, each time he has a layer, it, uh, it raises up to, to meet the next layer. That unit's now full. It's rolling out to have the weather cover put on it. The next pallet rolls in. Um, an empty pallet is lowered down. That feeds into the next station. And then the cover to keep you know, any uh, nails or any sharp objects from poking the bag when we're stacking on it. After the pallet rolls out, then we need to make it waterproof so it can be stored outside. We do that with a big cover that goes over the top. This is one of the heaviest covers in the industry. It's actually a, a four mil. There's two mil of black on the inside, two mil of white on the outside. They're co-extruded. Uh, we staple it to the bottom of the pallet so it doesn't blow up with wind. And then we will also stretch wrap around that to give it some stability so we can uh, ship it and it, it stands up well. So as you can see, that's a, a very square, nice unit. So it's gonna go on a truck nice and tight and not have problems as it's going down the road. Next station is to get the stretch wrap applied. As it moves up, we try to get three full roll wraps on the top. It'll move down, uh, overlapping by about a half a 
roll each time, and then we'll try to get another three wraps on the bottom. Now as the unit's finishing up and they're getting the last wrap on it, uh, the machine will actually cut the plastic itself. It, it hooks the last little bit to the packet, a heat comes out, cuts the stretch wrap, and now the unit's ready to go out to be either stored inside or out, depending on which truck it's needed for. Okay, we're, we're back at the beginning. This is where we started out with our pellets. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tour we gave today and answered some of the questions you might have about the product and how we end up here. Just a few brief reminders on how to take care of the pellet. You know, we do put the heavy weather cover on there, which is great to protect it from a lot of the weather, but you don't ever want to get a puncture in the top of it because even one small hole will let in moisture. And as you remember from the bagging situation, we have to put air holes down the side of each 40 pound bag that would then let in water and expand the pellets back to sawdust. Uh, you can set these almost any place. Inside is great, of course, but the best thing, don't put your pallet on top of grass or sod. Um, gravel, pavement, cement is going to be great. The sod tends to let a little bit of evaporation come up underneath the hood, and then it holds the moisture in there. When you're moving your product, try to move it and drop it as short a distance as possible. If I were to take a bag off the top and drop it from here, four feet, you're making more fines each time and your stove doesn't burn the fines as efficiently. So handle with care. It is a fairly tough bag, but try not to throw them into the back of your pickup. You're going to break seams and lose pellets all over. So. A little care, uh, continued at home, will help you give even a better burn from the pellets. And uh, any questions, give us a call sometime. Our toll-free number is 888-642-2363. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you're enjoying our products.